Hi everyone, I am Professor Jihad Dallal uh, from Gulf University for Science and Technology in Kuwait. On behalf of my colleagues, uh, the group that I'm working with, uh, their names are mentioned here. On behalf of them, I would like to present uh, our work titled Greenhouse Gases Time Series Forecasting using an improved hybrid model based on discrete Wavelet decomposition and support vector regression. I will start the uh, presentation by a brief introduction. Then I will talk about the related work. And then I will talk about the methodology that we have followed. Then I will describe the data that we have used uh, for our analysis. And then the results that we got. And finally, I will end the presentation by mentioning some conclusions and some future work uh, directions. So global warming, uh, it's a hot topic that uh, everyone is talking about these days. Um, uh, it is affected by the greenhouse uh, gas emissions. And because of this, every uh, all countries or many countries are talking about how to reduce the emissions of these gases, carbon dioxide and others. Um, so they are doing some plans and uh, based on these plans, they are uh, expecting, for example, the emissions to be reduced. So they are doing some uh, simulations or whatever, okay? And they would like to know whether these, uh, if they follow these paths, if they follow the plan that they have, are they going to succeed? So what's going to be the prediction, what's going to be the emissions in the future? So we have to predict. So we have data and based on the data if we are following the same factors that we have the same scenarios if we have the same situation what's going to happen in future what will be the emission for these gases in future so to do this prediction prediction um, researchers are using uh, machine learning techniques to do the predictions um, and this uh, research that we did, uh, we are proposing applying a technique that we already have, but uh, we pre-process the data that we have before feeding the data to the technique. The technique that we are uh, interested in is the uh, SVR. Um, before applying that one, we do pre-processing for the data. So actually we are doing hybrid technique, okay, in which we are pre-processing the data and then we are applying uh, the uh, a, a, a technique, a machine learning technique that we already have. There are a lot of studies. Uh, existing studies in which machine learning approaches are applied uh, to do the prediction for the uh, greenhouse uh, gas emissions. Um, I'm just going to mention two of these studies, so they are uh, two recent studies, uh, one in 2022 and the other one in 2021. And the first one uh, they have applied uh, three machine learning approaches, support vector machine, uh, artificial neural network, and long short uh, term memory. And by applying these techniques, they are trying to do the prediction for the uh, emissions of the greenhouse gases uh, in Russia, US, India, and China. In another study, um, the artificial neural networks, support vector machines, and deep learning approaches were applied to do the prediction for the emissions in Turkey. So you can see that we have uh, different studies uh, for different countries 
uh, in which we are applying different machine learning uh, techniques. Um, none of these uh, existing techniques that we have uh, went over applied a hybrid machine learning methodology uh, in which we are uh, adding two things, we are using two things together uh, to improve the prediction results. So this is what we are trying, uh, this is the gap that we are trying to, um, uh, that we are trying to fill. So as I mentioned, the machine learning techniques, the technique that we are uh, interested in is the uh, support vector regression, SVR. Uh, in this technique, uh, we are trying to find a function uh, that approximates the data that we have so in such a way uh, that this function has the most epsilon derivation where the epsilon is the distance that we have between the line for example or the curve that we have and the original points so we are trying to reduce this epsilon okay so we are trying to reduce uh, this this function that we are trying to find has at most uh, epsilon derivation from the true values and uh, that curve we are trying to have it to be as flat as possible to reduce or to avoid overfitting. So this is the technique that we have, which is the SVR, Support Vector Regression. Now, before applying that one, uh, we are doing pre-processing for the data. We are not giving that technique, we are not feeding that this technique with the original data that we have. Okay. And instead of this, we are pre-processing the data and we would like to compare at the end uh, if we are doing the pre-processing for the data and then we are feeding the pre-processed data to the SVR or we are feeding SVR with the original data and we compare the results to see the accuracy. So this is what we are trying to do in this study. So for pre-processing, we are applying the uh, wavelet decomposition um, so uh, Mallet in 1989 developed an efficient method um, using filters to calculate the wavelet coefficient at each position based on powers of two um, to do this analysis uh, we are applying discrete uh, wavelet transformation uh, and this uh, transformation uh, the data is pre-processed for decomposition uh, and this, this transformation is used for uh, denoising and for compression uh, of the time series. So once we do this we feed the data uh, as I mentioned, to the uh, technique, which is the SVR. Uh, so I just uh, went over the... So I just uh, went over the uh, slide in which I have... Uh, I'm talking about the data description. So uh, for the data, uh, we have used data generated using weather research and forecast uh, model simulations uh, for the greenhouse uh, gases concentrations uh, in California. Uh, the concentrations at 2,921 grid cells in California. Uh, the data was collected uh, over uh, almost 80 days from the 10th of May till the 31st of July in 2010 and uh, the, uh, the data is spaced over six hours apart so this means that we are collecting four data points a day every six hours we are taking uh, a measure 
So this is the description of the data. So we took this data and we have applied the hybrid technique that I have already mentioned and we got these results. Uh, you can see for these results that uh, we are doing the results, the shown, the result, the shown results are for four sites. Um, for the data that we have, we have divided the data into training set and testing set as typically, typically done when we do a machine learning, when we apply machine learning techniques. And we applied the SVR on the original data that we have. And we got the results and we have measured the error and the accuracy. So the error is measured in terms of two measures, RM uh, SE and MAE and uh, R is measured uh, using uh, two uh, measures the, sorry the, the, the accuracy is measured using two uh, measures R and NSE so for each of the models that we have for each of the sites the four sites for each set, the train and test, we did the measuring for these uh, factors, four factors, two for the errors and two for the accuracy. We did this measure, we, we did this evaluation actually for the models when we apply SVR, the traditional one, and the hybrid two. You can look at the results here and you can see the significant difference between these results. So you can see that the results were significantly improved. So uh, consistently, the error is significantly reduced and the accuracy is significantly improved. For example, let's look at the first line of results that we have. So you can see that the error for example, for RMSE is reduced from 2.56 to uh, 0.417. Okay, MAE is reduced from point almost 0.9 to uh, point almost 0.16. The the uh, accuracy is improved significantly. For example, if you look at R, it was 0.67. Uh, it became uh, 0.99 the same thing for the NSE it was 0.458 and now it is 0.98 the same thing applies for all other uh, models that we have so you can see the significant improvement in the results okay um, this is another way to look at the results so uh, the lines that we have for each of the, these charts, you can see the dotted, dotted line. This is for the prediction. And the uh, uh, blue points, these are the ones for the data that we have. So you can see if we uh, uh, are applying the traditional SVR model. So we are talking about the charts in the uh, left side. Uh, the, 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 uh, the points are scattered far from the prediction line where they are concentrated close to the prediction line when we have the hybrid technique. This applies if you look at all charts, you can uh, have the same observation. Another way of looking at the results, we have this one that shows the um, overlapping that we have between the uh, original data and the predictions okay uh, so you can see the overlapping uh, is high uh, when we have the hybrid technique the one in the right side uh, comparing to the one uh, sorry this these are in, uh, this is for uh, this is for uh, uh, we have lo uh, location and different time series we have the original if you look at the original uh, 
Yeah, uh, the one in the left side is the one for the traditional one. So we are using the SVR. And the one in the right side is for the uh, hybrid one. It's for the same location. You can see the overlapping between the blue ones, the original, and uh, the other ones, if you are talking about the original, uh, the orange or the green, okay, for the training set or the testing set, you can see the, uh, the, the overlapping in the right side is much more than the overlapping uh, that we have in the uh, left side. So, in conclusion, uh, when we are applying the hybrid technique for the prediction of the uh, greenhouse uh, gases, uh, gas emissions, we have found that the uh, wavelet-based uh, multi-resolution analysis decomposes the time series into a set of uh, constitutive series with an explicitly defined hierarchical structure. Also, we have found that this analysis uh, leads to building a prediction model that features an excellent generalization capability with high prediction accuracy compared to the traditional one. As an extension for this work, uh, the same technique that we already uh, applied uh, can be uh, applied for other data sets other than the one that we have mentioned for California. It can be applied for data sets in other countries, for example. And also we can compare the results uh, of the hybrid technique that we have proposed to the ones uh, from other, uh, when we apply other uh, machine learning techniques. And we can, so we can see uh, whether the, the results that we have from the hybrid technique that we have is better than the others or uh, the others are better. If we are applying uh, the decomposition that we have for pre-processing the data for the other technique, can this improve also the results for the other technique or no? So this is, can be uh, uh, studied in the future. Uh, thank you for listening and you are welcome to ask questions.